You already know that I have a lot of bias with the finals, but this update is actually insane. We're all used to by now the carnage, destruction, and chaos created in the arena, but Season 2 has proven that Embark have a secret magic trick, and we'll actually get onto that later. First of all, we all know that being introduced to this game was less than helpful. New players had no idea what the hell was going on, and obviously balancing was an issue. Embark introduced a brand new tutorial featuring a slice of that Monaco map. New players are now taught how to take a vault to a cash out, introduced to some gadgets and how to steal. Now for players like you and me, I'm actually already eyeing up some speedrunning potential in this. It's gonna be like that funny, like friendly competition just to kind of see how you can complete it the fastest. But obviously you're not here for the tutorial and you wanna see the new stuff in the game. And the very first thing you'll notice is that the main menu doesn't ingrain the color red into your soul. We get this awesome retro wave background featuring the whispers of the theme that's taking over in the new season. Now, firstly, you may notice here in the bottom left, we actually get a new way of actually unlocking content and doing stuff in the game. It's called circuits. And essentially you, as the contestant, will be sponsored by a company in the law. In this case, mine was Ospoos. The company will give you contracts to complete in order for you to unlock that sponsor's cosmetics. You start off as a rookie, but you'll be able to earn all the way up to masters and unlock the signature cosmetic. In this case, mine was an Ospoos tattoo. Back to the main menu, my eyes are of course immediately drawn to the cute little uh, Jock of Florian pet. Uh, which is oh another cosmetic God, in the game. Obviously, a quick reminder, Embark allowed us to test out the skins for free. We don't actually keep them. <laughs> a bundle that was super popular in Season 1 was the Starter Pack, which, of course, if you guys remember, it featured a AKM, v uh, M60, and also free multibucks. Well, in Season 2, this time, it's of course... Obviously, it's the Scar, or the Scar, uh, Lewis Gun, and M11, with the multibucks as well. I was quite pressed for time, so I wasn't able to indulge in every collection that was available. However... I did gaze oh upon this Disco AKM skin, which is very glamorous. And finally, the Toothy Tailwind Collection, which kind of features like, I guess, like a Warplane uh, type take on weapons as well. I mean, look at the attention to detail here. The leather, the stitchings on the grip. I mean, the, the colors just go together so well. Finally, before we jump into gameplay, people are obviously going to be asking the questions of what are the ranked rewards in Season 2? Gold. It rewards you a golden M60, which is quite nice. Platinum rewards you a platinum XP50. And finally, Diamond rewards you. What if you can guess? What do you think it rewards you? It is the Diamond car. And oh my god, it's crazy. Also, this season is going to be a little different, in which instead of of playing from bronze and climbing all the way to diamond you're actually playing in a league first after eight placements and then the matches are determined from that point on we'll get on to the battle passes and private matches later on in this video but first i'm dying to i have to check out the gameplay hopping into the new map just look at the beauty of it in my opinion it's sort of like a, a square with the, the template of a city and those middle parts of the map they can really get you caught off guard with the height but as you can see here, the real deal comes from taking fights out in the open currently, with plenty of surprise aspects coming from below. As you can see, the teleporter is able to be used for people on the opposing team as well. And to enter it, you simply interact with either E. Sound-wise, notice that there's also noises for when your teammates get coined in the arena and really nice indicators for their health on your team as well. I didn't see customization for it, but an improvement in my opinion would be able to minimize the icons on the screen. I think this is a great HUD for a new player starting out in the game, but for players like potentially even me that are more experienced in this game, I don't really want to kind of see a, a big ass death icon on, on my HUD or the player's health. I can just see it in the bottom left. Also as well, the defibrillator has actually been reworked in the game, where instead of an instant revive, um, I think it was like 30 or 40% health, right? Something like that. You're now going to be generating back into the world and be revived at 50% health. During this fight too, you can just see some of the ways that I'm going to be using the dematerializer. One of them is obviously quick access to fights below and sometimes even coordinate with your team to catch other players off guard. That is dying. As for the heavy shotgun, I really need to work out how this thing works because it's definitely not accurate. If you see here in this clip, it kind of feels as if the shotgun hits after about 0.2 seconds. So you can kind of see here that I was like trying to aim ahead 
get it? <laughs> okay, that was that was actually terrible. But headshot damage uh, doesn't really matter with the shotgun, so that's kind of like my my mistake. But yeah, trying to anticipate movement kind of threw me off here. Uh, I'm not sure if that is 100% how it works, but obviously it's something that we're going to kind of have to learn as Season 2 rolls out. Honestly though, I still think the auto shotgun slaps, so until I learn how to use this weapon, the choice doesn't really change for me. And then just a small fight I had here with the almighty uh, Embarker Noken. Uh, I was going to see here if you were friendly, but uh, you know, no, uh, unfortunately I'm I'm still a loner in, in the arena. Now for the anti-gravity grenade. Honestly, I, I was overstimulated playing, so really I didn't think at the time any use cases for it, but I did manage to on the fly find a nice crafty way to steal a cash out uh, using this little part of the map here as cover with the uh, cash out station itself. Very quickly, as for the FAMAS of the weapon, it wasn't really my weapon of choice, mainly because I just didn't feel like playing the FAMAS. I, I kind of still felt that the SCAR or the FGAR and the AKM were just stronger weapons compared to it. Maybe I'm going to be proven wrong and I need a bit more data on that, but yeah, the, the FGAR is definitely still the dominant weapon, especially when I was playing against players that you were using it. Alright, next up is the light contestant, which we will check out shortly, but after playing a couple of games, I decided to take a break and check out the new Battle Pass for Season 2, and also check out the all new private match feature, which has been highly requested across the board. So in this, I'm going to cover the highlights of the Battle Pass instead of going through all 96 items that you can get. So page one of the Battle Pass is basically a really nice, soft introduction for what's to come in the season ahead. A kind of more relaxing take on those vaporwave themes, which to me resembles more, I guess, like a Miami feeling. The next page introduces us to the first outfit called the Combo Calculator. I really like the gloves, jacket, and bandana combo here um, for other combinations that I'm going to try with other cosmetics. Page three gives us our first unique styled weapon that was teased in the trailer, the Cartridge Gunner. This might be one of my favorite skins. There's an alternative reload, which instead of just adjusting or, or reloading the magazine you can actually swap a king cartridge in the side and it's these, these small things that really make up the beauty of what embarker building uh, kind of like from a visual perspective page five shows us the outfits released in the trailer and next up we have page six where we can actually have a, a damn pencil as a dagger it's kind of nice to see that melee weapons are getting some love as well in this battle pass page eight shows us obviously the tv character that was teased in the trailer as well some people were mentioning obviously about the hit boxes etc but really I, I know it's a small thing um the game's pretty casual so I don't I don't really think it's a problem. I mean the finals is not attack FPS shooter or anything So I think it's okay another really cool thing I like in this page is uh, for you electricians out there uh, There's actually a defib skin that lets you put together the, the black and red wires to actually come and revive your down teammates So I think that's a really cool thing page 9 presents us with throwable scissors instead of throwing knives because you know Who doesn't want to throw scissors? Uh, we finally get some love to our shield players on page 10 uh, with actually a lot of other skins in this as well the famous page 11 is it's insane by the way. I think this might be my favorite page out of all the battle passes. You can obviously see you've got some pixelated uh, art in this one, including like the potion, for example, which is cool. But look at this sword. It's a pixelated sword skin. Finally, the last page um, is obviously uh, the featured outfit. And actually, the, the page on this is actually quite telling. So if you look at level 92 here, and there's an, there's an emote which essentially combines the contestant with another entity that's virtual, but still similar to them. So this could be like a huge law pointer towards like a, like a bridge between realities in the law too. Uh, but finally, the last outfit unlockable at the end of your journey in this coming season is called Ariad CNS. Uh, it's Ariad? I hope, I hope it's Ariad. Ariad? Ariad. If you guys remember the very last page in season one, we had Odilla. I think it's Odilla, also known as the Trickster. And um, basically that's a contestant in the finals who's known for, says her ability to dance between illusion and virtual reality leaving opponents chasing shadows all right we are moments away from exploring the light contestant to wrap it up but first of all we have to talk about private matches i did have a period of time where i knew about some of the things in the game before the trailer and private matches was one of them since they announced that feature people have been speculating a lot uh, even in my comments as well um, of what it would contain and i'm kind of here to ground you guys on this feature because it's very basic I kind of wished I was allowed to speak on this topic because, you know, saying to you guys, oh, you know, this is why I didn't say yesterday uh, when I made the video that there's going to be private matches because I kind of wanted to 
show you guys first what it's going to be. So firstly, it's not a custom games mode, okay? So it, it that means that you can't customize anything about the matches themselves. People were saying, oh, imagine if you could be able to, to change the event, the modifier, running speed, accuracy, uh, low gravity mode and stuff like that. That's amazing features. I would love to have that, but it's not in this private match uh, at the moment. Secondly, the lobby system is very basic as well. And currently there's no way to choose your team before you enter a match. So what you have to do is squad up together first in the main menu, then join the lobby using the code. The only modes right now for this are Quick Cash and Bank It, so you won't be able to simulate a tournament style match. Also another heartbreaker for me, uh, this is the one that I was the most excited for, uh, because I had some ideas uh, for you guys, but it's, it's the non-existence of a spectator mode. Um, and you need to have at least six players in the lobby with you before you st uh, before the game can start. These sound pretty heavy if you're watching, and obviously some of you guys might be disappointed. I did speak to the devs, I also shouted to Oscar as well and, and Rob, but I, I wanted to give you guys some information on this topic. This is the first template, you know, blank, basic, whatever you want to call it, interaction um, of, of what Embark can provide for private matches. Um, and throughout Season 2, this feature will actually be expanded on, um, adding in more features to this mode as well, okay? Um, as essentially, Embark created this with very, very tiny amounts of time you know they're, they're developing a new map new gadgets new game modes cosmetics and and honestly i'm happy that this is even a feature shift in season two okay if you remember um in in the season two um video that I, my predictions i said to you guys that i expected this feature to be kind of fully developed by season three or four and embark have already committed to this plan and already shown us this plan by giving us something that we can at least play with Yes, it's annoying and, you know, you'll need six players minimum uh, with you to start a match, but I want to remind you that the way Embark run servers are completely different to the way, you know, most games run servers too. Um, the destructions or, or physics on this game, it's actually ran on the server side. Yes, it's costly for them to do that, but it actually saves your FPS in game. If you think about it this way, it costs the same amount of hosting a server for two players as it does to 12, right? And of course, right now, sinking money into a lot of small private matches will in no way be sustainable for, you know, keeping the game running in the long term, okay? So this game, again, as a reminder to you, is a free to play. So, you know, please, if you can, support the devs. All right, let's check out the light contestant. The very instance I joined the game, immediately the teleporter was like second nature to me. That actually has a range of 70 meters from the point where you place the first one. So keep an eye on that little indicator uh, from the point you place it. The Beretta is actually a really good weapon that will kind of contend the likes of the XP-54, the v s and even the LH-1 as well. This weapon is on top compared to the other additions like the FAMAS or KS-93, the new heavy shotgun. Going back to the teleporter though, the action of this gadget really is going to change up the game with a butterfly effect and that is Embark's magic trick that's a secret thing that they've got in the game and you could ask why is that obviously one example right now is even faster deposits right into vaults mean that the later stages of the game are going to offer more scenarios for cash outs but beyond that simple idea of a mechanic the teleporter allows you to be able to merge and combine other things together um and just to explain to you what i mean by this is is i, I mentioned yesterday in the video about the tree branch theory right as you add more things that are able to be joined with more things then it's even more depth of the game and even right now this game is very complex i actually value the time spent that we had at the end of the creator session we were joining private matches um with other creators and top players in the game so you know shout out to you guys but we literally came together and discovered the most important things in the finals that will literally change not just your gameplay but the entire structure of the company at embark and maybe even the way we process our mon monetary transactions the world is going to change for this and that is very simply. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> 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 Alright, yeah, I mean, okay, we were, we were messing around a little bit initially, okay, you know, we, we did find some some weird little bugs, and obviously, you know, people are kind of scared a, a little bit about bugs that could be happening in the game. Yes, there's probably going to be a lot of exploits, just saying. Um, So we kind of have to brace ourselves for the first at least month. I mean, we kind of saw how many exploits happened in Season 1, you know, most notably my favourite was uh, the crane shield one, the helicopter crane. That was the most, that was the funniest bug I've seen in a while. <laughs> the alien seems yeah. really good moment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me in! Let me in! It's just destroying everything! <laughs> oh my god! But in all seriousness, what I'll do is I'll actually drop some of the highlights in, as well as uh, basically all of us discovering some of the more advanced ideas for the new gadgets. So the first one was actually uh, talking about a teleporter uh, being able to be interactable with certain other objects. Again, that tree branch theory I was talking about. So yes, you can actually get a nuke 
through a teleporter with C4 on it, for example, uh, you know, again, extending that out, that could be gas mines, explosive mines, uh, you know, attaching to this object. Uh, and you can throw that inside the teleporter. So, you know, this makes light a lot more viable in team comps now because light can set up these plays for your team. You can have light placed in the first teleporter in a, in a nice spot and then being able to basically run towards uh, a spot where light can set up that teleporter. And wherever you point the first initial thing before you throw it is the direction it will appear on the other side. So, for example, if I'm facing north and the teleporter is, in, is on my right, the, when I throw it, through the teleporter it will exit north as well if that makes sense notice how i hadn't really spoken about me using the experience of the data reshaper yet we actually got to test that out at the end of the test and let me say to you it is insane so you know it's gonna be obviously a replacement for a gadget potentially but you can do a lot more things than we even anticipated at the start of it right so First of all, we found out that if I shoot an RPG at you and you're holding a data reshaper and I think you spam or hold left, I think it's you spam left click, but you can hold left click maybe. I haven't tried that out yet, but either way, you left click, that RPG shell, or that RPG rocket can be transformed into something else. Like for example, a plant pot, as you can see, that's what happened here in this case. This is where my mind is blown. My mind is blown, even just by saying that, but the same even works for things like grenades and glitch grenades. It's crazy, it's a direct counter and it, it, it turns it into a flower pot, for example. So medium's viability with this, obviously, you know, you can throw another one obviously at the medium and stuff like that, but you, whether you guys like or dislike that, we have to admit that tech wise, that's crazy. Also, if you're up against a really pesky light player, you know, for my example, I had the benefit of uh, uh, going up against Piggy in our private match when we were testing things out. Um, if you remember, Piggy helped us create the awesome light introduction guide. Uh, this map is a playing ground for light means though. I mean, just look at this. See if you can actually find where Piggy is hiding. Again, we can do like a little game show, like where's Piggy? But like, like honestly, I, I have no, like it's crazy. These spots that Piggy found, even just by instantly playing the game is, is true. You have to be very, very cautious about, you know, you traversing around the map because if, if, if a light is set up in such a way, it can really, really catch you off guard. My favorite discovery so far uh, is that you can actually set up the teleporters if the vault is within range for it to automatically deposit for you. All right, this is a massive video that I've created for you guys. And honestly, I, I never ever thought that I'd you know get to the point where my channel has hit over 1 million video views. What the hell, guys? Like, this is not, this is you guys helping me do this stuff. This is crazy. I just upload videos. It, it's just mad. I mean, seriously, I've spent about five hours probably in the last two days, you know, replying to all your comments because I I just really appreciate you guys, you know, staying here, you know, watching, uh, commenting or, you know, supporting me as a creator, etc. It's just, it's just wild. I don't think, I don't think many other channels do that whole thing where they try and reply to each and every single comment. Uh, it's probably stupid. Uh, it's probably not that good, good idea spending that much time, but um, I hope at least that you guys see that I'm trying my best to get back to you. Um, it, it, someone that might become a manageable, but I, I'm going to try my best. Obviously, I'm still a no one, but uh, yeah, it, it, it makes you kind of emotional to just uh, see where you guys have helped me get to so far. I Yeah, it, it's crazy. I, I do hope you um, all enjoy season two. It, it's going to be a blast and I think I'm actually gonna live stream maybe on release day as well. So if you're down, you wanna come listen to an idiot um, that's, that thinks he's good at games, but he's washed. Uh, you know, if you're down to come hang out, maybe play some matches with me. We might do like a, a lobby thing going, right? Uh, maybe even ask some questions. Um, you know, feel free to do so. I, I, I'm not too sure yet. Well, you guys have to check um, if I am, but um, you know, that, that that's all for me. Um, Okay, this is just, I'm, I'm getting emotional, I need to stop. So that is all from me. Uh, again, thank you guys so much. Thank you to the devs at Embark. Um, this is a crazy experience that I just, I just love having, being able to play with these Titan creators, right? It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, my name's been Thix. As always, I'll see you on the podium.